country. We definitely want to wear safety goggles, right? Yeah. Okay. Although a lot of you don't like to wear them, like this kid here. You see that up on the wall? No. That's his eye. That's Richard, our student. You can call him Dick. Dick doesn't like to wear glasses, safety goggles, but you know one day he was uh, screwing around in the lab and he got a little bit of concentrated acid in his eye. What's happening to his eye? His corneas are cooking. Okay. What I have in this petri dish is egg whites. You can see through egg whites just like you can see through the corneas in your eyes because those are clear proteins. But if you heat them up on the stove or if you add acid to them, the proteins get cross-linked together into a polymer. And you have a white polymer called you know, cooked eggs or damaged blinded eye. So, in chemistry class, don't be a dick. Wear your goggles. All right. So we have a chemical change taking place. Let's list them up. One. There's heat being generated or heat will be absorbed. Something else. We can sometimes hear sound. Sometimes we see color change. Sometimes we see an odor being generated because we have a gas, gas being produced. And sometimes we get solids being produced, and those things we call precipitates. Precipitate. Excellent. So in this demonstration right here, in this demonstration right here, you'll see a combination of things. Now you can't see right here. Look up on the wall because where the tree is up there, that's where it's going to happen. So we have two colorless solutions. Okay? Can you see them colorless? So if I mix them together. Do you see any change to their colorless properties? No. No. So it appears that at least from the onset there's been no color change. Excuse me. Hey, you can see it up here. Hey, for the benefit of others, just zip it. It's okay. It's right here too. I'm okay. saying. All right. So, as we're doing this, okay, you need to recognize there has been no change to this point. Okay. Now the colors have mixed together. So there's a, there's a phrase that we use for, for liquids that mix together. We refer to them as miscible. So here comes the next color. Okay, in this case I had a yellow solution. And as you can see the yellow solution turned to a golden yellow solution very quickly. Chemical change? Yes. Yes. Okay, because you changed the color of the mixture. The last thing we're going to add is this red stuff. It kind of looks a little like blood. So we mix it in you will see that all the light that was once shining through the solution has now been absorbed. So if I mix it, okay, and what mixing will do here is it will speed up the chemical reaction. And as I mix it here, slowly but surely, what we should expect to happen is our once was opaque is now has now become translucent once again. We can see that it's green. It once was yellow, but now it's green. And if we wait around for a little bit longer, it will continue to change. And now it is blue. And if we wait a little bit longer, you'll see that it will change from a blue. And you'll start to see a red tinge come into it. And it will start to turn into a more violent color. And eventually, this color will end up being produced, will be a red color. And then the cycle will repeat itself. Every time you see a color change, it's a different chemical reaction. And so this chemical reaction just keeps oscillating over and over and over again. It'll be up on the wall for the period. All right, next. Okay, so. All right. So we have three balloons here. And density is mass over volume. I don't get three people in race. Can I three year old volunteers real quick? Mr. Oh, okay. That's awesome. It's like an orange on a toothpick. <laughs> wow, you're gonna get it. There he goes. There he goes. I need to. Oh yeah, watch your hair. Buddy. I love it. Is that real? Can I touch it? Like you love the one. That is that. Love that. <laughs> Here we go. All right. Ready? On this round three. One, two, three. Let Who's got the one that's the most dense? 
You do. Who's got the one that's the least then? Try to click this, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd he go? Here. Okay. So, I think we've lost our hydrogen out of here. So, I'm going to generate carbon dioxide. I'm going to generate some carbon dioxide by carrying out a chemical reaction. You might have done this as a little kid, baking soda, and not yet, and Acid. So you probably did baking soda and vinegar, but I'm going to use hydrochloric acid. Same difference, all right? And I'm going to generate some, put it in here. You can see the bubbles. The definitive test for carbon dioxide is that it will put out fire. So if I put it by the lit candle, the lit candles go out. Okay? It is a fluid, which means it is uh, a liquid or a gas, and flows. So it will flow out of the tube into the beaker. Again, I can use the definitive test, and I can put a lit candle in there to see if it actually goes into the beaker, right? So by now, it's probably filled. And I can put it into the beaker, and it goes out. If I dump the carbon dioxide out, and I put a lit candle in there, it won't go out, okay? Carbon dioxide is, has mass, so if I generate a little bit more carbon dioxide, and I pour it into one of the bags on the balance, you should see that there is a change in the balance, because right now the bags are equal, right? You see how there was a change in mass? The bag on the right is higher than the bag on the left. Okay? Now keep in mind that it can make ramps fall. And keep in mind that it can make candles go out. That one's been lit too long. I don't know if it'll stay there. So, and it's pourable. So I can pour it down the ramp, and what's going to happen? Hopefully it'll go out. Oh. All right. So, now there are other gases that are heavy also. All right. There's other gases that are heavy, but they're a little bit different. Carbon dioxide puts out fire, but some of them light fire. Sometimes the light I pour it down the ramp. Whoa! Oh, 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 Properties by warming them up. Yeah. So, if you can see right now, like the day after a birthday party, sometimes the balloons get a little bit squashable, they're not at full anymore. Well, there's an easy way to reinflate them. If you warm the gas, the particles will start to move quicker, and as they start to move quicker, they will expand further away from each other, and you'll be able to reinflate the balloon. So as you reinflate the balloon, it will once again be less dense than air, and it will start to float throughout the room again. Now, as it gets further away from the heat source, what happens to the air? Yeah, whatever's in the balloon, in this case it's heated, it will cool down and become more dense, and return back to it. You know, more dense than... More dense in that way. Okay. So, next thing. Ladies and gentlemen, does anybody know what this is? It's a sound pipe. This is my magic sound port of. Yeah. Magic sound for our sound. Now, uh, in order to pour sound, sound is energy, we want to make sure that we capture it. So what I do is I have this insulated vessel here. Someday when you do a calorimetry lab, you'll use this nice, very insulated vessel. 
Now, in order to pour sound, we got to make a sound, right? Yeah. So, this sound pour, the way the sound pour works is you got to heat it up in order to make a sound. So, let me heat it up. Now, your farts sound like that? You're eating something weird. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm going to do is pour the sound into this cup and then I'm going to pour it back into my magic sound pour of science. Okay, ready? Boy, it's got a little liquid sound. <laughs> Put some water in that. Can't have any water in that. Now, anyways, we'll show you out one more time. In the glass. Now this, this is a little bit harder, a little bit more difficult. You don't want to try this at home. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pour the sound into my mouth, spit it in the air, and catch it back in my sound pour. Okay. I dare you. Okay, so do this. Got to make a nice sound. Yeah, you don't want to get hit by any sound. Ready? <laughs> Do it. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sometimes there are substances that are afraid of water. And so I have lycopodium powder in here and a beaker of water. And when I stick my fingers in here, you'll notice they don't get wet. Oh my god. All right? They don't get wet at all. Because lycopodium powder is afraid of water. Maybe when you were a little kid, you were given the sand and you made little sand castles in the water. It is coated with silicon. All right? So it is a dust. And one thing about small particles that are mixed quickly with oxygen, they like to make fire. Alright? Okay, one thing we forgot to show you about carbon dioxide gas is there's another way to make carbon dioxide gas, not just with the, your uh, baking soda and vinegar explosion, it is by just taking carbon dioxide de gas and cooling it down. If I cool it down enough, I get what we call dry ice, which is... Awesome. Okay, which is solid carbon dioxide gas. Now, carbon dioxide gas normally, okay, it's a little bit different than regular ice. The reason why we call it dry ice because if you take regular ice and I sprinkle some regular ice on the floor over a period of time through this period, what will regular ice do? Melt. Melt. And I'll have a nice puddle of water and I'll slip and fall and look, I'll be really embarrassed. But the dry ice, yeah. I thought you dry ice be like. It's cold. You can't touch it for very long. Okay. So, dry ice, if I leave this on the floor, it will directly go from the solid state to, to the what? Yeah. To a gas. Okay. Now, in order to get liquid carbon dioxide, you have to increase the pressure. Now, you've probably seen, you know, in special effects where they have, you know, the foggy whatever, and you can see the foggy stuff, and you get all that. You know, miss. Now, one thing about this is this is not the carbon dioxide. The white stuff that you see is not the carbon dioxide. The white stuff you see is water vapor that has cooled down and is now kind of just floating in there with the carbon dioxide gas. Now, like we said, the test for carbon dioxide gas. The test for carbon dioxide gas. What's going to happen if I try to light it on fire? Ready? Let's see. The water. 
Uh, okay, it goes out. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, <laughs> now, go ahead and turn the lights back on. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm going to show you here is how to make liquid from carbon dioxide. Under normal atmospheric... Under normal atmospheric conditions, you're not able to make... Right. <laughs> liquid carbon dioxide. But if I increase the pressure, so real quick, not everyone's going to be able to see this real good, but what I have is some dry ice that I've got in this little pipette. I'm going to stop her off this pipette and we're going to increase the pressure in it. Now, I'm also going to heat it up so that you can slowly see. And it takes a second. Oh, it. It'll take a second here. As the pressure gets in there, you'll start to see the liquid boiling there, boiling, 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 boiling. Now, the cool thing is, once it goes back to atmospheric pressure, it turns directly back into a solid. solid. <laughs> That could have been bad. What's how so? Dollar. I'm broke. I got to have a dollar. I got Okay, yeah, come on. Come on. Come in dollar. Who's dollars? Come on, come here, my man. Hey, guys, close the door, man. What am I going to do? Here. I'll bet you $1. Wait, what? Wait, what? Wait, what? 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 Negro? What? What? You a water faster? Younger? Dude, I'll give you a head start. Huh? What did you do? Head start. You willing to lose a dollar? You can gain a dollar. Oh, uh, <laughs> But, wait, wait, first of all, which buggy do you want? The You sure? Punch take that. Oh, you sure? You can play the two minute game. Take the ten. I'll let you start. Ready? Go. What are you hopping for? Ready? Shake it! Oh! 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 Do not require a whole lot of input of energy to get a whole lot of energy out. Not all the time do you get a ton of heat and a big explosion and lots of flames. Sometimes you will see things stay relatively cool while at the same time they produce a very cool reaction. So here we go. If you get out the lights, please, that'd be great. This is called a chemiluminescence reaction. Okay? And so what happens in this reaction? the hell up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, hey, hey guys, it's just easy, just shut your mouth and talk. Here we go. So, so here goes. So you see it starts off red, and then you'll start to see it glow blue. Before. Maybe not the same color, maybe a green or yellow color. Cut it? Fireflies. Yes, good. Man over there has it. Alright, good stuff. So, this is also an exothermic reaction. It gives off heat. Yes, it gives off heat. So, lights on, please, if you touch the bottom of the beaker, you will see that the reaction is very exothermic and generates lots of heat. Okay? Generates lots of heat. Chemiluminescence. You don't have to have fire to produce light. Yes? Alright, thank you.
Okay, squat down now. Okay, what I need you to do, how? Kind of hold that between your legs right there. And this is how, you know, if you got some friends that are small and you want to go on vacation, you want to take a friend, instead of instead of buying them an airplane ticket, you know, you can pay 50 bucks for the extra baggage and go. Now what has happened? Poor little guy, huh? He sucked, we sucked the air out of the bag. But you are surrounded by air pressure 24-7. And the air pressure then started pushing on the bag. There was no air pressure to push out. And he got shrink wrapped. Many of you know this, that's the... Oh bush puddle, right? Why the bush puddle? Well, because of this. Look what happens. So as the as it cools down, all the air is been burnt up. There's not as much air in here anymore. So there's not as much pressure pushing the sides of the container outwards. But what there is is a lot more atmospheric pressure pushing it inwards. If we fill it up with air, it goes back to how it was. The wash bottle. This is the oxygen one. No, this is that picture I showed you. Oh, oh yeah. No, it's not. No, it's not. No. That's best for last night. No, this next one. Oh. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is what we call calcium carbide. Uh, when it reacts with water, it forms acetylene, which is uh, what they use in torches to cut things. Also, I believe miners used to use these in the helmets to actually make some light. That little acetylene, uh, little acetylene torch that was on their hat, and that's how uh, back before we had flashlights, that's what they used to uh, uh, mine coal down in the tiny mines. Now, what I'm going to do is put a couple pieces of these in, some water, make some acetylene gas here. It's starting to bubble a little bit. We'll stopper this off. And go ahead and get the lights. I've got a little igniter, lights. Okay, turn the lights off for one second. Go ahead. Turn it off. Ready? Here, switch. Let me switch real quick. Oh, God. Oh, there we go. Let's try this. This one. Okay. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, does anyone want to try this? Yeah. I want to try it. Let the end of the back Where's he? Who's he? Yeah. 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 Don't be afraid of you and go back. Really? Yeah. Oh, this is gonna be awesome. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Damn. Oh. One, two, three, four, 
balls of science. <laughs> now, uh, what I'm showing you is a micro scale version of the thermite reaction. I don't know how many people are familiar with the thermite reaction. Thermite reaction is basically this rusty ball is covered with what? Aluminum. Now, it's just aluminum and rust. When you mix aluminum and rust together and add a little bit of energy to get it started, it's a very exothermic reaction. You can turn the lights off. Okay. Oh. some aluminum powder and some rust. I mixed it together and I got a lot more than this micro scale reaction that's happening between these two rusty balls. <laughs> now, go ahead and hit the lights. Oh. 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 Look over this way. Danny, ain't no. I need to be a squad. Oh shit. When do you think it's gonna happen? Oh, 
put fire in this. Yeah, here's another reaction. Can a lot of water. <laughs> yeah, like two drops. Ooh. Whoa. Oh, 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 that's a firework. I got that one. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I got that one. Yeah. 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 Alright, here we go! Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 <laughs> Woo! Wow! Awesome water for the mason jar! Wow. Oh my god, I love science! Yeah. I'll do it again for you! There's definitely water going in the jar, right? No, of course it is. Maybe. What else would it Maybe. be? <laughs> this time I'm not going to let it out so easy. It's not safe. Oh. Yeah, okay. What? You definitely put a cap on there. Oh, no, he no didn't. cap on there. No, no, oh my god, you do this. Oh, it's one of those things that. Uh, oh, that's 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 Hey, if you look here, there's a little bit of screen mesh right there. What that does is as I turn it over like this right here, is there is enough surface tension in the water to prevent itself from pouring out. On top of that, I'm not letting air go into the container apart from what's already there. So when I turn it upside down, it's slightly lower pressure than atmospheric pressure, so there's a little bit of atmospheric pressure pushing it back up. When I tilt it, more air can go in it forces the water out. That's how you're able to pour water or keep water in the flask without putting the cap on it, yeah? Alright, good stuff. Next. The tiny micro scale egg explosion. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no, what the? Yeah, don't get to it. Egg explosion. Go ahead and end the light. Look at you. Looking for a little flame. A little flame. If we can get a little flame at the top of the egg. Does anybody remember the old campaign for Pringles? Watch your pop, you can't stop. Yep. Oh yeah. Let's see if I can get this board. So those are combustion reactions with hydrogen. We're going to do another combustion reaction with ethanol here. I love that. I or some of the friends. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. So, as a little review, we have things that extinguish a flame, such as. We have things which support a flame, such as hydrogen. And we have things which burn, and, we, and those things we call the flammable substances, such as sodium, alcohol, hydrogen. Yeah, a lot of that stuff. We're gonna put some. We're gonna go through this again. And we're gonna give you a quick review. Here's carbon dioxide balloon. 
So, we're going to light the splint here. Now, what should you, ex what should you expect to see Nothing. as the flame comes in contact with the gas? It goes out, yeah? It's kind of boring. So, we don't want to use carbon dioxide as our fuel for our fireworks display. We're going to step it up and we're going to use some hydrogen. And hydrogen burns kind of like this. So that's kind of what we want for a fireworks display. We want you to be able to see, yeah, we want you to be able to see the flames, and we want you to also produce colors. So here's the first one, barrier. Here's the next one. Let's see if you guys can remember from your flame test lab which one this is. Sodium. Calcium. Oh. Okay. Here we go. Here's the red one. Nothing. That one's with you. Oh, the best is yet to come, folks. The oxygen is sodium. Sodium Sodium. Hey! A couple more. There's potassium. Colors are coming out. Also, the color is gross. What color should potassium burn with? Purple. Bananas. Now we call it a lilac flame, yeah? Here we go. <laughs> Alright. Alright. Alright, here we go. Hold on here. Now, the last one we've got here oh, is my what? It's like a percussion round. What? So loud. What do you mean by that? Well, I mean this. Oh, no. oh. The that was hydrogen oxygen. Now, hey, listen up. Here's what we're going to do here. Here's what we're going to do here. Any, any of you played with methane bubbles before in class? So, as many of you as we can fit in before the bell, it's going to get an opportunity to come up. And we're going to ignite some methane bubbles out of your hand. Now, here's the deal. There's a certain protocol that you've got to follow. If you've got anything flammable around your wrists or on your hands or anything like that, take it off. Okay? The next thing. Okay, please if you could, if you've got long hair, you can tuck it in the back of your shirt or put it back somehow. Next, hey, 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 listen up, you've got to listen. Before you step up and do anything with the stuff over here, you've got to put on goggles, then you've got to dip your hand in some water. Why? Yeah, or else you get yeah, all the hair burn on the back of your hands like I did earlier. And then you come over here and you listen to what Mr. Cox is telling you to do. Once you're done with that, Take off your goggles, put it back in the box, go rinse your hands and dry them and sit back down. Can we do it? Yes, we can. Good job. All right, line up.